Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another video. In today's episode, I will share with you another tip for building microservices in Go. Specifically, I will be talking about RabbitMQ and how we can use it for implementing queues in distributed systems. So what is RabbitMQ? RabbitMQ is a message broker. It literally accepts and, and forwards messages. The way the RabbitMQ ha likes to describe is using the analogy of a mail mailing post office and the mailman that is delivering your mail so when you the way we like to think about RabbitMQ is you you know you drop off your mail into your mailbox that one goes into the post office and that one is delivered by the mail person eventually to the address that you were using well all of this is RabbitMQ so how does it work as you may imagine because it's a queue there is a obviously an implementation of a queue that then you can sub we can submit messages one by one and then those eventually are consumed by the consumer however it's a little bit more complicated than that and the way it works behind the scenes is that there is this thing called exchange and this exchange uh, we can configure it with whatever values we need to do, we need and that configuration will allow you to route different messages to different clients so when we're sending a message depending on the bindings that we have and that will be the configuration that we have we will be able to send those events or those messages to different queues now at the same time the clients will be defining different configuration values that they can allow allow them to listen to different events so perhaps they can listen to different uh, values that are coming from two different queues or maybe specific by a wildcard or those kind of things so it's more complicated than a simple queue that's what i'm trying to say so how does this work in real life in practice let's look at the code and i will, I will show you so as usual the code will be linked in the description of this video the link to the code that is feel free to clone it and check it out and whatnot so the way we're going to be doing this is that we're going to be using the api that we built previously there is the open api user interface let me show you and also what i'm using is the docker uh, management uh, version of the rabbitmq image so you can actually go and log in this uh, and all of that will be in the documentation that i have under the docs package what i had to do this time because now we are talking about two different independent binaries which could be represented to different services i had to refactor a few things and one of them will be the way we are instantiating instantiating the connections to all the different servers so if you notice right here under the cmd folder there is an internal folder that defines for each one of what each one of the servers that we are using a new a new file and as you may imagine Elasticsearch is using the configuration for Elasticsearch open telemetry is the configuration for open telemetry uh, postgres for postgres and so on and so forth the important one that we are going to be covering now and we're going to be focusing on more will be rabbitmq and rabbitmq the way i'm defining it right now i'm using a rabbitmq uh, url uh, environment variable for configuration purposes but like i'm saying in the comment perhaps it makes sense to define something similar to the way the postgres uh, the configuration is implemented using username password hostname and those kind of things it depends on your needs so you know it, it's up to you the thing that i'm doing and i mentioned previously in the first section of the video was that we need to define an exchange and that exchange the way i'm using um, the routing of the messages is using topic there are a few different ways to route those values i'm not going to be covering all of them in this video but i'm planning to create a few video series that cover more in detail everything about rabbitmq and how to use it with go after that i'm, I'm specifying a quality of service for indicating hey how many events um our messages are the channel supposed to be consuming in the case of the consumer so with that being said what is happening is that I had to implement another server, like I was mentioning in the beginning, and that server is, is the one in charge of consuming events that are coming from uh, Elasticsearch, well, rather, the, the, the events that are coming from, obviously, RabbitMQ, but are being triggered by the requests that are happening on the REST layer, okay? And the way it's implemented is similar to what we decided to do when we were work talking about the graceful showdown kind of thing. and Again, there is a run method right here that defines instantiate all the servers that we need. 
and then I implemented a new type called server which is right here that happens to be defining all the things that we need for our server that happens to be consuming events from RabbitMQ. It has a similar API to the HTTP server, the, like there is a listen and serve, as well as a shutdown down here. And the way it works, as you may imagine, is exactly the same as the way we implemented the HTTP server for the other uh, binary, which is the REST server. So they are sort of equivalent, and it shouldn't be that difficult for you to follow along. Now, what is important here is that we are going to be listening to those events, those messages, and we are going to be uh, decoding them from the binary uh, format that they were sent us sent into one that we can understand. And for that, the way we are doing this is using gob, which is included in the standard library. Now, the, it, this depends, uh, literally you can send anything using bytes, you could be using a JSON, an array of uh, bytes that represents a JSON, or maybe you can use a different format like Avro or maybe protocol buffers, but for, the, for this example, using GOB makes the most sense. So, as you may have remembered from other videos, I'm using a decoder that then eventually is used by the uh, go routine that is listening for those events messages right here is coming from the call to channel consume that it literally returns a go channel and i'm literally just doing a for loop for receiving all the events that we have to receive now because i'm doing a graceful shutdown when the event that is indicated by the uh, signal is received it will be triggering the shutdown that is right here and it will be also closing the channel that we are using for this for right here and therefore we won't be able to read any more messages the for will will close and then we can trigger the other one channel that i decided to have here which is again right here and that's how we do graceful shutdown now let me show you if i this is the server if i do a control c or a sick term uh, right now I will do the shutdown that uh, we were expecting so everything is working so that's okay now how is the actual uh, repository for the RabbitMQ implemented let's look at that so the RabbitMQ repository that we are going to be using is implemented following a similar structure, a structure that we defined before there is a RabbitMQ folder that happens to be living again under the internal package that at the moment is only implemented at task uh, type and that task type receives a channel that is in, in charge of uh, or is going to be in charge of publishing the event and for each one of the th things that happen we are going to be firing different events for this specific uh, service or tool we are going to be using the attribute called routing key to identify what event we are receiving depending on different message brokers there are different ways to do it i'm doing it like this for rabbitmq for now when we are talking about kafka in future videos i will show you a, i will show you a different way now if you remember main in elastic in the elastic search indexer you will notice that there is a actual a switch case right here and that one is doing the calls that we were doing previously in the previous video when we were talking about searching using Elasticsearch. So the routing key is sort of like the one used for determining how to decode the message and then from there what event or rather what method we are going to be calling from the task type or rather task field which in this case will be the repository for Elasticsearch that is in the, the one doing the actual Elasticsearch um, indexing or deleting of the record. All right. So with that being said, let's jump into the actual uh, service. If you remember in the service, we were doing something similar. Uh, or rather, we were doing what we were doing. We we're doing what we were doing before, which is calling a, a another service, another repository for triggering the indexing of uh, the Elasticsearch records. In this case, we are not calling directly Elasticsearch, but rather we're calling the broker. And the broker, again, is in injected using or re rather assigned using dependency injection with when we are instantiating this service type. All right. So with all of that being said, let me show you the actual uh, code in action. So we have a 
post that is still working using the search API but let me create a new task that you may imagine is working let's say new task the priority will be uh, none let's table it the way it is and uh, let's say that is in 501 so we're creating a new record a it succeeds and it says that this is the id okay so let's say if we search by task let's look at the way we have all the records that we have it should be right there so we have two new tasks one of them is none and one of them is high let's search by the new tasks which let's search by task which should be the one acd whatever and this one will be the one triggering or rather this one already was indexed by the event that we receive in the elastic searcher so we should be having two tasks i want to show you this again so you can look at the actual message right here it's actually right here they we receive a task event created that was the one in charge of creating the record already indexing the first time but if we go ahead and we modify this one uh, into i don't know whatever value it doesn't really matter what the value is i just want to show you that it's going to be something showing up right here in the back uh, change let's call it change doesn't really matter and you will notice that we receive the event updated in this case if we search by change as expected we should see something that reflects what we just modified so this is the cool thing about this and 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 i really like it because the whole point of using distributed systems or rather in the specifically in this case rabbitmq is that you can only use it for or for processing jobs in the background those things that take too long to complete or should be processed uh, at the same time that we're receiving a request from our customers which again will be the uh, one use case will be indexing uh, values in Elasticsearch but if you think something more practical or something more, more much more common will be creating a PDF file or maybe sending a message um, or rather sending an email and but also at the same time using RabbitMQ is useful for communicating between different microservices which if you think about it if we have two binaries right here running this could be literally two different microservices but in the context of our service we're using it for use communicating to different processes that belong to the same microservice all right and, and a real example of this will be something perhaps in charge of uh, keeping track of the history of the tasks how, how when they were modified what time they were modified what are the new values and those kind of things okay now one another cool thing i want to show you is that the docker image that i'm using for rabbitmq includes this nice management user interface so there is these channels uh, you know that obviously lists all the channels that we have the exchanges which is the, one of them is called tasks this is the one that we are using for this demo there is a queue that again as you may imagine it includes the queues that we're using and a bunch of different things that that uh, are relevant for you know debugging purposes and it's really cool to have so with all of that being said what is why should be using should we be using rabbitmq well we can use rabbitmq for processing some things and some works or jobs in the background when we don't have to process them right away in the same request that we're receiving from our customers and like i said when we are trying to communicate between work the, it works as a middleman in between our services and different external services that they need to consume information from us the way i show you is that the, there is an event there were three events one for creating one for updating and one for deleting tasks in those cases the there are all different other message brokers that i will be covering in the future but this is one of the perhaps one of the most popular ones as, as well as kafka but I, I will discuss those in that one in the future as usual thank you for watching and i will talk to you next time any comments or any questions just let me know take care see you